Hi there, welcome to Joyce on YouTube. Don't forget to join us on the Joyce Meyer app and at JoyceMeyer.org for more of what you're about to see and lots of great content to help you in your everyday life. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm gonna challenge you to pray every morning. God, would you put somebody in my path today that I can help? How many of you would be willing to do that? Okay, now you stuck your hand up there and God saw it. Amen? And you can't be picky and choosy. And remember, there's none of this no, Lord, that doesn't work. You can't be selective about what God asks you to do. And then one other story, my daughter, you know, it doesn't always have to involve money. Sometimes people just need you to listen. Or sometimes even just to smile. Or just to tell somebody you're doing a good job. My daughter was coming out of the store one day and this elderly gentleman was waiting at the curb by her and there was all kinds of traffic going by. And she was in a hurry, wanted to get home and do all these things, but she had to wait for all this traffic. And so this man starts talking to her. And she didn't really want to listen. But you know, if we're going to be real Christians, we don't always get to do what we want to do. Amen? Amen. And so she said, I felt like God just put it on my heart to just stand there and listen to him. So she said, I stood there for 15 minutes and just listened to him. And you know what? That was just a kind thing to do. But you know what, we've always got something else we have in addition to our do not disturb sign is we've all got an excuse bag. <laughs> and so really, to be honest, most Christians just look like this. All oh, the cameras come out when I act silly. Now, of course, we wouldn't wear them like this, but they're really there. We always have an excuse when it's not going to be convenient. Love always finds a way, but indifference finds an excuse. A reporter interviewing people on the street approached a well-dressed, successful-looking man and asked, what are the two most pressing problems in America? And the man said, I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> and the reporter said, sir, you are absolutely correct. Those are the two biggest problems. People don't know and they don't care. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I went to church last Sunday. Isn't that enough? No. <laughs> See, we're just fooling ourselves if we're not going to get out in the world and live it. Yeah, you're being a little too quiet. <laughs> we're just fooling ourselves if we're not going to get out. And I know that's a little bit scary because you think, I, Joyce, I don't know if I can do that kind of stuff like you're talking about. Well, it's not that, you know, God has me do something like that every day, but I get interrupted a lot by God. Because <laughs> it's about more than just coming and sitting in a pew. Amen? Amen? Indifference is the attitude that pervades our culture today. I don't know and I don't care. Don't disturb me. I've always got an excuse. I'm too busy, I'm too this, I'm too that. I don't know how to do that. I'd feel silly, whatever it might be. In Luke 14, 12 through 14, it said, Jesus said to his host, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, don't invite your friends, your brothers or your sisters, your relatives or your rich neighbors. If you do, they might invite you back. And then you'll be repaid. Now, you know, Jesus used a lot of 
over-exaggerations to make points, and that was very common in those days. I do it sometimes in my preaching. I'll overstate something to make a point. And uh, so he didn't, he's not really saying you can't have your friends for dinner. He's just saying make sure that that's not all that you have. <laughs> How about let's have some of the people that you don't know that can't pay you back. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. And you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Luke 14, 16 through 20. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and he invited many guests. And at the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come because everything's now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. And I think maybe Jesus might be saying today, okay, everything is all ready. Come now and get out in the world and start doing what you say you believe. Hmm. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first one said, well, I've just bought a field and I have to go see to it. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Would you please excuse me? And still another said, well, I just got married so I can't come. Please excuse me. In Matthew 8, 19 through 22, it says, Then a teacher of the law came to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to even lay his head. In other words, if you're going to follow me, it's not always going to be comfortable. Another disciple said to him, Lord, I'd like to go, but first let me go and bury my father. Listen to what Jesus said. But Jesus said, follow me and let the dead bury the dead. So what's Jesus saying? Leave the dead stuff alone and follow me. How many hours a day do you spend on social media listening to all the gossip and the stupidity that people spurt out about stuff they don't even know anything about? I, you would not believe the stuff that I can find out about me if I get on there. <laughs> I mean, three years ago, I was dead. <laughs> we had people calling the office crying. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I had to get on Facebook and say, I'm not dead. <laughs> right here. We have people calling the office still to this day insisting that they can buy our diet pills that I'm selling. <laughs> I don't sell diet pills. I'm preaching the gospel. I mean, I... People just really need to get something to do. But you know, that, that's just wasted time. Just to go through all that stuff. And everybody telling you every move they're making all day long. I mean, who cares? <laughs> I guess somebody does. They keep reading it. And if you're somebody who does that, I'm sorry if I'm offending you. But there's so many more things to do than to spend hours a day Reading all this stuff, a lot of it is just gossip. And I thank God for the internet because we can put the gospel anywhere and the devil can't stop us. If they got a signal, they can pull it down. But then, of course, Satan always tries to take advantage of every good thing that's out there, too. And so be careful about spending too much of your time on dead things. Jesus said, no, follow me. I invite you to join me in the Joyce Meyer app or at JoyceMeyer.org. Today, for more on this topic and other teachings, I believe God will use these to help you in your everyday life. I'll look forward to seeing you there.